Okay, so sorry for the um, uh, bit of a shaky camera setup here. I haven't got the uh, the proper setup up here. We're moving in the outback at the moment, uh, so we have to do it by hand. What we've been working on of late is the ability for the Mega 65 to uh, to uh, update its own bit streams in the Flash and to have more than one of those. So if I hold down the Tab key and turn the power off and on, it instead of booting normally will actually come up. Uh, with this, this is the flash menu. So slot zero uh, always has the uh, the factory core, uh, which is actually what has this menu and uh, is in fact actually a complete Mega 65 core. Uh, but what we have is we have a bunch of other slots that are currently all empty, uh, and but we can uh, put things in. So if we read down the bottom, control one to seven lets us edit those slots. Um, we can actually just press the, the digits zero to seven uh, or select and hit enter to actually launch a slot. Uh, you'll notice that you can't do control zero uh, to replace the factory core because there's a risk of breaking that. There is a way to do it. It's convoluted on purpose. Um, but let's do control one and install a, a core. So we have the choice of array slot or here is a core file that we've put in uh, for with the Mega 65. But later on, people could port. There's an Amiga FPGA implementation. There's Apple II, there's Spectrum. All of these things can be made uh, to run in different slots on the Mega 65, and then you can just do the you know, hold down tab when you turn it on and pick which one you want. So let's put that one in. So it'll start by erasing, um, and <laughs> feel free to skip ahead in the video at points if the, uh, the dialogue is too dull while you're waiting for this to finish, because it will take a few minutes uh, to go through. But for the, uh, the curious, uh, I'll explain a little bit of what's going on uh, behind the scene. So the Mega 65 has a 32 megabyte flash memory chip on the motherboard and that's what the FPGA boots from but the FPGA only needs uh, about three and a half megabytes of that. Uh, depends a little bit on the particular bitstream as to exactly how big uh, but it means that we can safely fit eight of them in there. Uh, and so the, uh, the factory core has this menu and everything built in and when you power on it has a look to see if you've got something in slot one if you have, then it will switch to the bitstream in slot one. Uh, so there's sort of some, some magic in the Xilinx FPGAs where you can, the FPGA itself can actually uh, feed itself the beginning of a bitstream that actually says, get the rest of the bitstream from this place in the flash memory. Uh, and so that's uh, what we do. Um, if that slot looks to be corrupt because it doesn't have a, the magic header that we've made our menu look for, then it will actually give you a warning and, uh, and tell you about that. Uh, and keep coming into the menu every time. Uh, and like I said, if there's nothing in that slot, then it will just boot normally uh, without going in. So we, we tried to make this so that it's really easy for you to upgrade <coughs> the Mega 65 at home. You don't need any other computer or anything. All you have to do is to get the core file onto the SD card. Uh, and at some point in the future, we'll get that set up so that you can actually download that uh, from the internet using the Mega 65 itself. But for now, you can just stick it on a, um, a micro SD card. Uh, and so if you're actually normally using the internal micro, the internal SD card, in fact, it's a full size one internal, uh, on the back, there's an external micro SD slot. Uh, if you put a card in that with the, uh, the core file in and then do this, the external card will take priority over the internal one and you'll be able to choose the core file uh, and install it. So again, it'll be nice and uh, easy to do. So we can see that actually even the erasing uh, takes a while. There should actually be a way that we can make that probably about five times faster. Uh, but it's a case of going through all of the, the fine detail as to how the um, uh, the flash erasing uh, and everything works. Uh, we'll have a look at doing that. But in any case, uh, the writing is actually quite slow as well. Um, probably still, uh, again, it's a, a bit slower than doing it if you've got all the right uh, JTAG debug tools and, uh, and all the rest of it with a fully optimized implementation. And we'll try and improve this as we go uh, forward. But at least it gets, uh, you know, it, it works and it finishes in a, a reasonable time frame where reasonable is, you know, of the order of well, the complete process probably takes 10 to 15 minutes at the moment. So, you know, about as long as learning a game from tape in the good old days. Um, yeah, so I will <coughs> go silent for a moment while we let that finish so you can skip ahead in the video and make it look like it's uh, flashing really fast.
just a quick hello to all of you who have been uh, super patient and not fast forwarded uh, the video. Uh, maybe this is a good place to uh, give a, a bit of a, uh, a sneak update to some of the bits and pieces that are going on. So I think word on the street is that we hope to have pre-orders for the dev kits for the Mega 65 in the next few weeks uh, starting. We had a, a good catch up with the uh, the folks at Trends Electronic who make the main board for the Mega 65 and that uh, are still keen to uh, sell the complete machines for us, which is great. Uh, you know, they have a uh, a good interest in the main board being sold and everything. So it's just one of those really natural, uh, really nice uh, relationships. And, and we get along with the folks from there uh, really well. So. And now if we watch it boot now that's been written, we should, we'll probably see briefly we get the flashing red and blue lights indicates switching bitstream and it boots up with the new core. So that's really all there is to do to uh, upgrade the Mega 65 with a new bitstream. <laughs> 